Welcome to my lecture online. You know, the next question I asked myself, how long would it take for a sphere made out of metal, radius of 20 centimeters, made out of copper, therefore a density of 8,900 kilograms per cubic meter, a total mass of 289 kilograms. Let's say that it starts at 300 Kelvin, you place it somewhere in space far away from the nearest star where there's no input of energy, and let's assume that the temperature outside is absolute zero. Of course, we know that's not quite the case. The temperature of the universe is more like 2.7 Kelvin, but just to simplify things, let's say that it's zero Kelvin, and we wanted to know how long would it take for the sphere to reach a temperature of one Kelvin radiating out the heat that it contained. Of course, we already knew that it contains about 80 million joules of energy starting at 300 Kelvin. The result was actually quite surprising. So, here we go. Here was one of the equations that we derived in an earlier video, and we'll put it in this format. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. And let's go ahead and plug in the value. So, the, temp the time that it takes to go down to the temperature being equal to 1 Kelvin is equal to, well, we had a mass of 289 kilograms, specific heat, 900 joules per kilogram per Kelvin degree, divide by 3 times 1, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. And the surface area of the sphere would be uh, pi 4 pi times the radius squared, 0 0.2 quantity squared. All right, then we still have in the numerator this quantity right here, so it would be 1 over the final temperature, that would be 1 cubed minus 1 over 300 cubed. All right, how long would it take? Well, let's find out. Okay, let's plug in all the numbers and see what we get. And I think we can figure that out with a calculator. So basically, 1 over 300 cubed, that's a close to zero as you can get, so this is basically equal to 1. So we end up with 289 times 900, divide by 3, divide by 5.67, e to the 8 minus, divide by 4, divide by pi, and divide by 0.2 squared equals, ah, 3.04 times 10 to the 12th. Let's write that down. T is equal to 3.04 times 10 to the 12th, and that would be in seconds. So we're talking about 3 trillion seconds. Wow, that's an enormous amount of time. And put things in perspective, let's convert that to days. That would be um, uh, one day divided by 86,400 seconds. And then let's convert it to years. That would be uh, one year divided by 365 days. I know that it's actually 365 and a quarter, but that's close enough. Let's see how many years that would be. So that's divide by 86,400, divided by 365, and it would be 96,000 years. So the time would be approximately 100,000 years to cool down to one degree Kelvin. So a sphere left in space starting at 300 Kelvin would reach an incredible well, it would take an incredible long amount of time to reach one Kelvin, 100,000 years. That's quite remarkable. And of course, the reason for that is the rate of emission becomes so, so small at the end. It takes such an enormous amount of time to, to let go of the last little bit of energy that's in there. The rate of radiation drops way, way down when it gets to be a very cold temperature. So let's calculate the dQdt. The dQdt at t equals 1 Kelvin, and so it would be e times sigma times a times t to the fourth power, so that would be 1 times 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. Area would be 4 pi times 0 0.2 squared, and the temperature would be 1 to the fourth power. So let's see at what rate the heat then would be radiated out from the sphere. 5.67 e to the 8 minus times 4 times pi times 0.2 squared equals, that would be 2.85 times 10 to the minus 8. So 2.85 times 10 to the minus 8 joules per second. So 
How long would it take to radiate out a single joule by the time the temperature is down to 1 Kelvin and assuming the surroundings is at zero? So the time for 1 joule, how do we calculate that? We simply take the inverse of that. So let's take the inverse and uh, divide by 86,400. And that would be 406 days. So you can see that uh, it would take more than a year to radiate out a single joule by the time the temperature of the sphere had dropped to one Kelvin above absolute zero. Again, assuming the surroundings are at absolute zero. That's quite a remarkable thing. The radiation off of, away from objects, heat radiation from objects, really drops down to very, very slow rate once the temperature drops to a very small number. The radiation is at very high rates for very high temperatures. And again, that makes sense when you look at the equation where the heat dissipation or the heat radiation of an object is a function of temperature to the fourth power. It's quite amazing how our, how our universe works. And there's a simple example of it.